Yeah, you're not kidding. It feels good to be back home. (laughs) Hey, everybody. Thomas Miller back in the saddle on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Yeah, we'll talk about the trip here in a little bit. Let's push that to the end. How about that? So that those who just want to hear about the astrology can do so. We are back in real time, and it feels good to do that, too. I like keeping in touch with what we do and then kind of what's going on, at least knowing where we are. How's it all playing out? Today, we'll put the Sibley chart of the United States up and take a look at this vote that they're going to have about um, increasing the credit card limit. But let's take a look at what's in the sky over our heads right now. Not much. The moon moves into Scorpio this evening at 745 Eastern. And that's after a most of the day, almost nine hour void of course. The void of course begins at 1053 a.m. That sounds perfect for unpacking day and getting everything back into place day. So, yeah, that'll be a good chunk of today. I wasn't expecting to do a Ray Merriman episode on Saturday, and I didn't. I did it on Sunday. (laughs) That's part of the story of the trip. But Ray and one of his team members there at MMACycles.com, at the Merriman Market Analyst, asked if they could put the video that we do on YouTube on their YouTube channel of the Saturday financial episodes that we do. And I was like, well, my goodness, yes, absolutely. So we even massaged that a little bit more, turned it into a podcast for them. Then I got some real clarity on some future stuff that I need to be working on. And then also another opportunity presented. And that's why I stayed down another extra day to explore that. So something was going on either in my own natal chart or in the sky, but that was really cool to see those things come together. But the reason I mentioned Ray was because when I did the Sunday episode, he mentioned something that was a, whoa, if you caught the episode on Sunday, you know that I called that out and mentioned that this is a really big deal. He mentioned that Pluto in mundane astrology Often the effect of a Pluto aspect happens after the conjunction, not before it. And this is something that I had had my eye on. I The other thing that is kind of obvious to me is that Pluto has bigger orbs than anything else. And I'm talking years, not months or weeks. That becomes a very interesting conversation in and of itself. But now all of a sudden, as Pluto is walking its way backwards in the sky in retrograde, A week from Sunday, on June 11th, Pluto moves back into Capricorn. On that same day, Mercury enters its home turf of Gemini. So I guess we'll wait a couple of years to find out what happens to that, right? But it is a ding, 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 like ring the bell, we need to keep an eye on this one. And it might even tie into that vote that they're getting ready to have today. And speaking of that, what about the moon? And it's slipping around as it wraps things up in Libra before it moves into Scorpio. Well, the last aspect that it hits before that void, of course, is a square to Venus, which is all about money. And then this evening, and I don't know when this big vote is supposed to happen, but this evening, gosh, you can't make this up, can you? The moon squares Pluto. The moon will be right at the early degrees of Scorpio. And remember, when anything hits a sign change, there's Pluto between now and basically 2025. So the United States big Pluto return. So here's the day that they're going to vote to increase. You know, it's like your teenager coming in and asking for more money. And in the context of that, Pluto has come all the way back around to where it was when you began (laughs) They need an astrologer in Washington, D.C. so badly. What's that verse in the Bible about thinking they are wise, they became fools? And, you know, this is not to say that the moon is going to trip this thing up or whatever the impact that is. It's just saying that this is not the day to do that vote. Not to mention that the sun is sitting right on top of the United States Uranus or that Mars is sitting on top of the United States North Node. But it's kind of interesting how the aspects today weave into that story. Now, what about tomorrow? What about Thursday, June 1st? The only direct aspect is that Jupiter conjoins the north node of the moon, and that's later in the day. That's at 8.43 p.m. Eastern. That's, of course, in Taurus. Still four planets stacked into Taurus. Jupiter at three degrees, 
conjoining the North Node tomorrow at 3. Mercury at 15, and remember we just mentioned that Mercury will complete its transit through Taurus on the 11th, going back home to Gemini. Then Uranus at 20 degrees Taurus. So we may have a Gemini sun and we may be in Gemini season, but there's still a lot of that Earth energy right behind in Taurus. I think the big thing right now energetically is to take a lesson, perhaps the biggest lesson I learned from this trip this past week, was to hold the space with confident stability. A very Taurian thing to do. Spent Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with 77 people from all over the world in Florida with the guy that I've narrated all these audiobooks for, the author, Fred Dodson. One of the things that everybody commented on was just how fixed, how stable, how unfazed and unrattled Fred is. Do you know that there was not any talk about current events, unless there was a time that I was out of the room? No conversation about all this stuff going on in the world. It was only about fixing our energy on the highest level. It's a good message from the stars. All right, if you're just here for the astrology, we'll kick out here. But as far as the trip went, the biggest thing that I observed was that aspect, that little tiny mention that we talked about a couple of weeks ago about when the moon is transiting between Jupiter and the sun in the same sign. Here it happened to be Taurus before the moon entered Gemini. That can be an interesting disruptor to transportation especially. Well, I mentioned a couple of really good things happened as far as future outlook, future direction, new opportunities. That was in place, and wow, they were great. That has a Jupiter signature too, doesn't it? But on the flip side, many of you know that I have a heart issue. It's an arrhythmia called atrial fibrillation. And it's one of those things, you know, that we stand in this space of healing and then sometimes you have to recognize, oh, and my tooth hurts too. You know, it's like you have this issue and that's kind of where I am is dancing between that. So it's not one of those things that you like to own, but it's there. So you recognize it and it showed up over the weekend. This is kind of wild because as I'm looking at this chart of when it happened, the Friday evening is the time it happened. That stellium stack that we just talked about in Taurus was in the sixth house of health. That's where a few days before the moon would have moved through there. Hmm. <laughs> ah, the little nuances, right? Well, it is good to be back home and we will see you back again tomorrow. So enjoy this as we go into a deeper and a little bit more intense moon later this evening. <laughs>